I just wanted to see if you missed me. <laughs> I actually had to go up back up to Bishopville because I forgot my children's story. It was up there. So what I got here in my hand is we're going to have a Lenten party. And we need volunteers to help. So I'm going to pass this around. If you're more willing to help, please put your name down on this. And I'll make sure Cheryl gets it so we can get it, so we can get it through for our Lenten. March 6th. It's going to be March 6th. So if you would like to put your name down to help out, that'd be great. Right. More than one person can help. So. Is there any other announcements this morning? Is there any other announcements this morning? On February 28th, the bishop is coming to our district. And I have offered our church for that. Uh, I have, I'll find out tomorrow if they're going to use our church here. It's February 28th. It's a Monday. And he wants to do a little session with people. But he doesn't want more than 20 or 25 people so he can stay social distance. So that, that way, because they're still, they're still doing the social distance. And if you saw out here in the front, masks are optional. Masks are optional. Um, the governors help us to say we can, don't have to wear a mask if you don't want to. Any other announcements? Got one back there. Uh, Cheryl is, is uh, visiting, finally having Christmas with her family in Arlington. But I'm sure if she was here, she would stand up and say, please keep uh, Club Can Do in prayer. Uh, there still are some uh, positions that need to be filled to, to make that possible, and that's through the month of March, and I believe the first Friday in April. So do keep that in your prayers, that, uh, um, that she gets enough help to pull it off at Club Can Do. Right. It's rolling thunder is this theme. If you don't know what Club Can Do is, it's a program they do in the school five Fridays in the spring and five Fridays in the fall. And uh, they have all the churches come together and they help. And I want I want to also thank Elaine for stepping in for Jennifer. Um, Jennifer <laughs> Jennifer had an accident last Sunday. She flipped her car. So she's not going to be here today. She didn't. When she called me, she said she wouldn't feel like coming in today. So I want to let you know on that. Any other announcements? How about joys and concerns? Yes, I have a joy. Um, I'm so glad they invented cardiac stents. I now have seven. I went last Tuesday and they put in two more. 
So that's a joy for me. It's also a concern. People would keep me in prayer because I'm not rolling back as fast as I have before. Um, it's just one of those things, but I'm, I'm very glad that they invented these things, that's for sure. And uh, under concerns, um, my cousin did pass away, and we will be having his funeral on Tuesday, so just keep us, our family in prayer. Um, I'm just going to say that we have a loved one who is severely ill. I need to keep my aunt in um, prayer. She's the one that just lost her husband, and now she's in the hospital with COVID. Um, Heather, or yeah, Lenny's niece, Heather, Heather Farnham, her husband on Monday had um, his surgery for thyroid cancer, and Char it's Charlie Farnham, and they lived... Like, he grew up here in Hornell, so you may know him, but um, prayers for Charlie. Just, just asking prayers for one of my very best friends. Um, her name is Lois, and she is diagnosed with lung cancer. And just a lot of prayers. Thank you. And I have a joy that anyone that saw Mary Poppins this weekend, it was fun. It was very nice. It was nice to see live theater in the schools again. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've heard our joys. We're glad to have some joys. But also you've heard our concerns as well, Lord. So Lord, we ask you to be with those that are in need of your prayer, uh, families that need prayer because of a lost one, uh, families that need prayer for someone that is ill. We, Lord, we just thank you for, for your presence with us, Lord, as we continue to pray with you and and uh, help us to understand that you are always always hearing and seeing us, Lord, and, and you know exactly what's going on in our lives. And Lord, we just thank you for that, and we ask you to lift everyone up. And Lord, we have those unspoken prayers as well, Lord. Uh, we know there are some out there. So Lord, we ask you for those too, uh, that you lift them up. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Green's not on.
Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and on the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. God of gentle, loving guidance, who brought the Israelites into a new land, filled with new hope and promise, but with us today, opening our hearts and our spirits to the awareness of your abiding love and the presence with us. Help us to place a trust fully in you and ask us in your name. Amen. Great one of the love of Christ in your hearts. Come on up. You might have a goodie. You never know. Take one. Anyone else? Want to come up? No? You don't want to come up? <laughs> they don't fly very good, do they? <laughs> they don't fly very good, do they? Missed. Now you all have a valentine and the ones that picked them up have valentines as well. But I also have a valentine too. See my valentine? Gotta turn it around too. See my valentine? This is my valentine. It doesn't look very pretty, does it? It's very blah. It's really bad, right? But this is my favorite Valentine. It's because what's inside. It's what's important. This is what's inside. Now it's much better, right? It's much, much better, right? Much better. A Valentine. Much better. Than this to this. But the main thing about this Valentine is the scripture. It's in John 15, verse 13. 
Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Isn't that what Jesus did for us? He laid down his life for his friends, which is every one of us. Every one of us. Now, I don't want you to get sugar high on these suckers because mom and dad have to take care of you. So don't get sugar high. And same with you. Don't get sugar high on adults because your kids got to take care of you. But that's the main reason that we have Jesus is because he died on the cross for us so we may have eternal life. And I love this scripture because it says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did for us. He laid down his life for each one of us in Christ. He suffered on the cross, even though it's Valentine's Day and all that. Now I'm going to ask you, what are you going to do for Valentine's Day? Uh, we got some teenagers here. Come on. <laughs> what are you doing on Valentine's? Ah. They're embarrassing up here. They're turning blushing, you know, they're blushing. <laughs> well, what you can do for your parents is one thing, is you can clean your rooms. <laughs> clean your rooms, right, right? Clean your rooms, right? You can do that for your mom and dad. And for husbands out here, You can do the dishes for your wives. I don't cook. Maybe some of you men cook, but I don't cook. You don't want to eat my food. <laughs> but husbands, if you're not going to cook a meal for your wife, do the dishes. Do the dishes for them. So you guys are going to have fun Valentine's Day, right? What is the main thing about this, though? Your Valentine card. Jesus. Jesus died for you. He laid down his life for each of us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for laying down your life for each one of us. We know you did it for us, and we thank you. And we ask you to be with each and every person here today. Be with these teenagers and younger ones and the adults as well. Help them to see that you are our friend. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can go to junior church or wherever you go. Now you know why I had to go back up to Bishopville. You wouldn't got suckers. <laughs>
Today is Stewardship Sunday. You can place your in this offering plate. Oh, Lord, there's so much we should be grateful for. Sometimes we forget to say thank you. Lord, we ask that you be with each person here today. We thank you for their, their support and their pledges. We may use this money, this pledges that, to good use for our community and our church. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you guys. Good morning. So our first reading today will be Psalm 19, 1 through 2. Well, I read the, I've got the wrong one. Sorry. That was, that was the last time. <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't match. There we go. This will be better. How about Psalm 33, 13 through 15? That matches what I have marked here. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees every human being from his dwelling place. God observes all who live on earth. God is the one who made all hearts, the one who knows everything they do. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Therefore, hum therefore, humble yourselves under God's power so that he may raise you up in the last day. Throw all your anxiety onto him because he cares about you. Be clear-headed, keep alert. Your accuser, the devil, is on the prowl like a roaring lion. Seeking, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Do so, do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring and same suffering throughout the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the one who called you into his, his eternal glory in Christ Jesus will himself restore, empower, strengthen, and establish you. To him be power forever and always. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And our third reading is from Matthew 23, 12. And if you'll please stand. All who lift themselves up will be brought low, but all who make themselves low will be lifted up. This is the gospel of the Lord. Maybe seated. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Do you believe that God sees all? God sees all. To have God who sees all, do you know what that means? 
A God who sees all. Do you know what that means? It means that he cares. He cares. Let us pray. I know you see, and I have faith that you see, everything going on. The God, the good, I'm sorry, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Thank you for always being a watchful over your creation. Amen. The last few weeks we've discovered a God who never changes. Just as he moved in our lives in the people of the past, he moves in our lives of people today. In this series, we want to discover exactly how he moves and how we can experience him in our life and in here and in the here and now. Now, in week one, we spoke of God still speaking. And he does still speak to us today in a number of ways. And in week two, we learned that God is still hearing. And we talked about the beauty of serving God, whose ears are open to the cries of his people. This week we are talking about God who sees. And that's a, a title of the message today, Always Seeing. Now here's a big idea behind this message. The God who sees means it's a God who cares. I want this message to be a message of hope. Our world needs hope today. God has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten his creation. Have you ever had this thought? Surely we all have had some at some point in our life. Maybe it's a trouble or a trial you are, are, are going through. Or some losses are adding up to the loss, life of your you can't seem to catch your break. Last year, I didn't think I could catch a break. I had 13 funerals last year. I didn't think I was going to take a break, catch that break. Or maybe it's just the evil in our world. We read the news every morning or or of senseless murders and people who are being taken advantage of. Lives lost to do over tragedy of some kind. And the question we ask is this. God, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Take it to its root and question really is God, do you care? Do you really care? Are you seeing what's happening in this world? Do you really care? I sometimes, when I look at the news at night, at the eight o'clock, six o'clock news, it's like everything is on there is, is bad news. Bad news. Even with the Olympics, they're talking about people in the Olympics that have, there's bad news in the Olympics. That should be a joy. And then I, sometimes I wonder, God, are you seeing this? Are you really seeing what's happening around this world? Are you seeing us? Do you even care? Do you care about us? This is what the Christian Peter was writing to in Asia Minor, the modern day Turkey. We're asking, here they are living in intense persecution. They were being abused and, 
and taken advantage of. Some were dying for their faith that they were holding on to. And Peter writes to encourage these believers to keep their trust in Jesus. To put their hope in him. He reminds, he reminds them that, that God still sees and God still cares. He cares about them. He cares about us. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 11 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversities, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone, seeking someone. To destroy. God sees what we do. God sees what we do. Psalms 33, 13 through 15, it says, The Lord looks down from heaven and he sees all the children of men. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. And he who, fashion, he who fashions the heart of them all and observes all their deeds. Maybe you're wondering what God is doing. He is sitting on his throne looking out over his creation, ruling and reigning, working his plan for this world and in our lives as well. And he is observing all our deeds. Listen to these proverbs. Proverbs 5 Verse 21. For a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on evil and the good. The Bible says he is looking for those who are faithful, faithful to him. 2 Chronicles 16, 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fo throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless toward him. God sees everything. Everything recalls the words of Jesus. In Matthew 6, 4 through 6, but when you give to the needy, do, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret and, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For the love, for their love to stand, they love to stand and pray in the synagogues at the street corners. And they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to the Father who is in the secret. And in in your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So how many here have a special place that they can go and pray in secret? I know of a few in this church to do. If you do not have that place, you need to find that place. You need to find a place where you can pray in secret. 
and let your family know that that is your time with the Lord so they will not disturb you. Husbands, if your wives are praying in their secret place, do not ask them where there is something to eat in your house. Do not disturb them. Same with wives. Find that place. He would teach later in a parable of Matthew 25 about the eternal rewards. When you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick and imprisoned, God notices. If you do these things and you don't think anyone notices, remember God does. God does. God sees our actions and our obedience and reward it. He will reward it. He also sees our disobedience and in, in, in sin. Listen to what Jeremiah 16, 17 says. For my eyes are on all your their ways. They are not hidden from me, nor is their inequality con concealing from my eyes. Maybe you think he won't notice this fridge expense report, fridge expense report. Maybe he won't notice your budging your your budget, cheating on your taxes. Maybe he won't notice when you raid the refrigerator when you're not supposed to be. If I close the door and turn down the lights, he won't see me clicking on those sites that I had no business being on. In Hebrews 4, 13, and no create creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Psalms 121, 3 and 8. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord will keep you going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. He's watching you. He's watching you and me. Nothing is getting past him. He sees everything. He sees our faithfulness in our obedience as well as our unfaithfulness in disobedience. And what Peter wants the believers to hear in the midst of this persecution is to know is God still sees whether or not they are going to humble themselves in the light of the suffering they are experiencing so that, that at proper time they will exalt it or are going to stiffen their neck toward God of what he is allowing them to go through. Knowing God sees us should motivate us to stay on the course. He sees, God sees what we do. Remember where God is positioned. He is ruling and reigning, sitting enthroned over all his creation. This points to his sovereignty. He sees things differently than we do. He has what I call a press box view of all of life. Because of where God is positioning, the, he has different perspective. And he sees things we don't see. For example, he does, 
doesn't just see our obedience or our disobedience, but he, he sees the very motives of our heart. He sees why we obey or disobey. He sees the heart. Jeremiah 17, 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. Do you remember when Samuel was called to anoint the king of Israel? Jesse brings all his sons in and the first, first one Samuel comes across is Elib. And Samuel is an impressed. Samuel is, is impressed with what he sees. He is tall, handsome, looks like he should be a king. But God, he's not impressed. Again, he sees things we don't see. 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at the appearance or the height of his statue because I rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Have you ever seen that commercial where there's a, a big burly guy with tattoos all over him? And there's several people beside him, dressed in suits and all nicely dressed and everything else. But he's the only one in the bunch that is reading his Bible. We should not judge for the outward appearance of someone. Never judge someone from their appearance. God sees the heart. Unanswered prayers is one of the reasons sometimes we don't think God is caring. I think of this context of unanswered prayers. We talked about having a God who hears our prayers last week. Why is it that, that sometimes he doesn't answer our prayers in a way we want him to, to or ask him to? It is because he sees what we don't see. God is an ultimate air traffic controller. Let me give you an illustration of an air traffic controller. Aviation flight companies like uh, FlightAware that, that keep track of most of all the planes in the sky to a, at a given time, according to a survey taken in 2017, there were an average of 9,728 planes carrying 1,270,406 people in the sky at any given time. Can you imagine? having that many planes and that many people that are responsible for to make sure they don't collide with each other? Can you imagine? But God sees all people. He sees all the pieces at play. He sees what, what will bring us harm and he sees what will bring us the most glory. He sees the course and affects our every choice. Our every choice we make before it is even made. How is that possible? How can God know what we're thinking about tomorrow? Because he sees everything. And this is why we can say and believe with confidence the promise of Romans 8.28. And we know that 
for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Our seeing is limited. God's is not. And this should be one of the main reasons we worship him. John Piper says this, God is always doing 10,000 things in our life and you may be aware of, of three of them. Can you imagine? He knows what's aware of 10,000s in our life but we're only aware of three. Three. How is that possible? God sees everything even when we don't even see it. He even sees our adversity, the devil, prowling around like roaring lions, seeking to devour us. He sees what is really real. And that's the spiritual battle we are in. Peter here is encouraging the believers in the persecution not to get so fixed, fixated or fixed on outward circumstances of their life. Concentrating on all those who are physically opposed to them. He's reminding them. He's reminding them who the battle is really Reminding them of who the battle really is against. It's against the devil. Satan himself. Satan and the forces of darkness. I truly believe. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this. But I truly believe. The United States of America. Satan's winning. He's winning. We're full of darkness here in this country. Recall the words of Paul in Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Are you understanding a bit more clearly why we desperately need God so much? Do you understand why we need God? We need him so bad. Need him so bad. Peter tells those persecuted believers to stand firm in their faith because it's their faith that allows them to see with spiritual eyes what we could never see with physical eyes. God sees what we do. God sees what we do. God sees what we don't. And then thirdly, God sees what has us down. In 1 Peter passage, God is very aware of the believers and the suffering persecution that they're going through. Again, again, it has caught him. It has not caught him, I'm sorry. It has not caught him by surprise. I need you to know this. God still sees you right now. In the midst of your hurt and pain, in the strength and your hardship, the struggles in your hardship, if you are confused and confusion, sorry, if you're confused and in tears, God sees your confusion and your tears. 
this principle reminds me of a story of the Old Testament of Hagar. Do you remember her? her? She was Abraham or Sarah's servant. And God had promised Abraham and Sarah a child. But they were old. They didn't know if they were going to have a child. So they went and to Sarah told Abraham to have relations with her servant so they may have a child and that they can raise it as their own. They didn't wait for God. They didn't wait for him. And so together, Sarah and Abraham make the decision that Abraham go and sleep with Sarah's servant, Hagar, in the hopes that Hagar becomes pregnant with, his, with a child. And Abraham and Sarah will, will raise it as their own. Well, that happened. Hagar became pregnant and Sarah became so jealous and angry that the Bible says that she dealt harshly with Hagar. And so Hagar was sent away or run away. But Hagar runs into the desert wilderness to get away from Sarah and she is broken woman. She is a servant, a servant that only did what she was told to do is now being unjustly treated. She is tired. She is alone. She is absolutely nothing, has nothing and, and no one. At that moment, an angel of the Lord appeared and told her to go back, submit to Abraham and Sarah. The and angel of the Lord promised her and that she would have a son and listen to her response. You see, she, she called the name of the Lord and spoke to her. You are the God of seeing. For you said, truly, here I have seen. I have seen him who looks after me. So you see, God saw what Hagar was going through. Hagar said, you are the God of seeing. Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. This is a God who serve, we serve. I'm sorry, this is a God we serve. He is a God who sees you. He sees you going through, he sees what you're going through and seeing you looking after you. He cares for you. I can tell you how much comfort and hope this should bring us. What is weighing on your heart? Is it a broken relationship? Were your recipients abuse in the past? Is it a secret sin that you're struggling with? Is it that your bills are piling up and you don't know when relief is going to come? Is it a miscarriage? Or is it inedible, able to get pregnant? Is it an addiction? Is it an illness or an injury? Is it a death of a loved one? Whatever it is, listen to me. God sees and God hears. God sees everything. God sees every tear you shed in your suffering, whatever it may be, will only be a short time, even if it's for a reminder of your year, remainder of your years. Here's a wonderful promise in 1 Peter 5, 10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you into eternal glory, 
in Christ will himself restore, confirm, and strengthen and establish you. Do you believe that? God sees what we don't see. God sees what has us down. God sees us in every circumstance. God sees us in our struggles. When we place our faith and trust in Jesus, God no longer sees us in our sin, but instead he sees his son who died for our sins. Colossians 3, 3 and 4 says, For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. What does God see when he sees you? What does God see when he sees you? Does he see Christ do in you trusting? Are you trusting Jesus? Does he see that you are trusting him? God sees us. He sees every circumstance, every case. But he also is a caring, loving God. If you accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, he does not see your sin anymore. He does not see it one bit of it. He has erased it from your life. If you follow him, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for seeing us the way we are and for giving us our sins. Lord, we ask that you be with us and watch over us each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand if you're able in spirit and join us in the closing hymn and sing it loud.
Lord sees us, we want to see him. Go and share Jesus wherever you go because this world needs it. Go in peace with love of Christ. Amen. There is coffee hour.